Okay, we'll give it a couple of minutes just to allow a few more people to join. Just give it a couple more minutes. We've got lots of people joining. Let's give it a couple more minutes and then we will kick off. Okay, let's make a start. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking 45 minutes out of your lunchtime for the rescheduled October BBD Boom webinar. Um, I'm going to start with an apology. Apologies, we had to reschedule today's webinar. Um, sadly, I picked up COVID late October, which put me out of action for about three days. Good news is all singing and dancing again. And because this is such a good subject to discuss, I thought we would try and jam it into the very busy schedule that Boom has with our webinars, because I think there's so much that we can take from today's session, which will be relevant to your business, to your current buying decision, um, and where you might be in your thought process. So introductions, my name's Andy Silvers. I am your host for today's session. Um, I am the head of client success at BBD Boom, which means I have the very fortunate job of building relationship with the majority, majority of the customers that we have in Boom. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing, and sometimes you get to the stage where you've known someone for three years and you just cannot get rid of them. We'll come on to that in a minute. Um, in, case, in case you haven't heard of us, I would like to think that you have the fact that you've registered on today's webinar, but in case you haven't heard of BBD Boom, we are HubSpot Elite Partner. We, are, we work with approximately 200 companies. We specialize thoroughly in HubSpot, and we work with a lot of the companies that we work with working on strategic projects, inbound game plans, HubSpot optimization, website projects, and essentially bringing together the whole HubSpot ecosystem and working out with you what role it plays within your business. So less about me, we're now gonna go on to today's subject. So um, a question for everyone, have you purchased or are you thinking about pur purchasing HubSpot in your, as your current CMO of choice? If the answer to either of those two questions is a yes, then today's webinar is going to be perfect for you. Today, we are going to be with a live customer. We are going to be talking about why they chose HubSpot, how and why HubSpot was customized to work for their business. Not everything goes to plan, so lessons learned. And then what does this mean for your business? And I'm very pleased to kick off with an introduction to Louise Mason, who is the head of marketing at Property Alliance Group, who has been very willing to come on board um, today's webinar, share her stories, share her relationship that she has with BBD Boom and talk about what the project's been like for her. So welcome, Louise. Thank you very much. Um, and welcome to BBD Boom's very own Tommy Price. Those of you that have been on a Boom webinar in the past would know that you've probably seen Tommy's face many a times before. He is one of our CRM gurus at Boom and Tommy has been critical and there's a big word there, critical in the development to what we've done with Property Alliance Group in helping to deliver against Louise's requirements. But also, I would say, take on board feedback of how we can push the system harder than it's actually planned to be. So welcome, Tommy. Good to have you all on board today. So I'm going to jump straight into it. Louise, why HubSpot? Uh, that's a strong question. So we, as, as you know, we've rolled out HubSpot across four different brands in Property Alliance Group and each of our different companies 
deals with different sectors, different sections, sorry, of the property journey. So they've each got really different requirements. We have Salesforce and one of the companies, which I'm sure we'll uh, circle back to in a little bit. And we had a, a strange custom CRM that was in another and then nothing in the others. So I was really looking for something that was flexible, adaptable, would suit the needs of all the different customers. And um, being really blunt, because I am very, very blunt as a person, something that was a sensible price. Um, and I didn't need to employ a whole member of staff to sit there for us to be able to make changes. So I did a lot of research, lots and lots of demos with lots of different companies. But um, there's a really nice guy called Ryan, lovely, charming HubSpot Ryan, um, Irish guy. And he spent a lot of time and I'm very pedantic, asked lots and lots of questions. But HubSpot was the one that we kept coming back to just for the range of customizability that it would allow us. So the um, out of the box, off the shelf version was fantastic. It did 90% of what we wanted to do as that phase one of the project, but it also had infinite possibilities, which is very dangerous for someone like me, which uh, yeah, I'm sure Tommy, Tommy started to go gray and he had a full jet black head of hair when he started working with me. But there's lots and lots of stuff that the system allows us to either integrate with other platforms or fully customize ourselves through the custom objects, which uh, I know Tommy will talk about a little bit later on. So yeah, it's uh, it was very much the, the leader out there in the market for me. We went through five or six different, very, very detailed demos and about eight, nine months of testing and trialing. But yeah, HubSpot offered the widest range of, of options and services at a really, really sensible price. So paint the picture out, 14 months ago, you engaged with Ryan, Ryan sold you the world, sold you a dream about what HubSpot could do. When you first got HubSpot out of the box, where did you where did you start to find you needed to work with, or where did you start to find your limitations? So we started the Light City Living first, and for better or worse, we decided, uh, we had a couple of members of staff in house that we decided we, we weren't going to use a partner, and we were just going to do it ourselves. Um, what we learned really, really quickly is that HubSpot is really easy to use. I am now a HubSpot qualified expert, done all my certifications, but because it is so adaptable. I'd beg to differ, but we're good. We're, not, we're, all, we're, not all of them, not all, enough that someone like me needs to do without being dangerous. But, you know, so we we went through all the different, you know, different bits and pieces and sort of said, right, well, great. Where can, where can we start? Where do we go? And because it's so customizable and so adaptable, there's infinite things you can do. And we really found that we needed someone, that's why Boom came in, to give us that guidance to say, here's all the things we want to do. Here's five different ways I can get my head around how I think we can do it. Which of these is the best practice way to use HubSpot? Or if this is my problem, what other options can you guys come back to me as, as BBD Boom? So we started, as I said, we did the first half of the ACL rollout ourselves. And then for the rest of Alliance City Living, Alliance Investments, Property Alliance Group, Spetwall and others, we brought BBD Boom on fully on board. Um, and it was a completely different process for us. It was a real game changer in, as to how easy it was to roll out the system, that input and the knowledge and advice that we got on the way, but then also the ease of rolling it out. It was a much quicker, much slicker process. And we definitely got a, a better system out of all of the other ones. And so we've actually gone back and basically rebuilt some of the stuff we did ourselves at the start for Lion City Living. So just to, just as a bit of explaining to everyone out there, um, right. Louise and I have known each other now for close to three years. Um, Louise was a customer of mine at a previous company. So when I when I left that previous company and I thought, right, I'm going to someone new, I kind of thought I'd left all my customers behind and I'm going on to something fresh and something new and exciting to get stuck into. And lo and behold, when I start, I find that Louise and Property Alliance Groups are actually going to be one of my customers. So there's a lot of history between that. But also, I think where I first then started with Boom and you had just started your relationship with Boom as well, I think common requirements at the time were, certainly from my perspective, you had a great system, but we need to now push it. So this is why I'm going to bring Tommy a little bit into the mix, because Tommy, let's go back probably 11 months ago, start of this year, we start having conversations with Louise, Louise about, um, I'd like HubSpot to be able to do this. And there was a long list, but let's narrow it down a little bit ago. These are some of the key things that I'd like to work out how this system can really improve efficiencies, look at journeys, look at operational requirements. Talk to me a little bit about the process that you went through, taking on board Louise's requirements to then start to picture how you could turn that into some implementation work. 
Yeah, definitely, Andy. And I think we can break that down by Alliance City Living and Alliance Investments. So when it came to Alliance City Living, firstly, one of the use cases was being able to actually have buildings and apartments as records inside of HubSpot. So um, as I'm sure a lot of you are, are aware, over the last year, HubSpot has changed quite significantly in the sense that they've implemented a new feature for custom objects so that allows for such a high level um, customization within the CRM system. So previously, you would only have the standard object entities, contacts, companies and deals. Now with HubSpot, you can effectively build your own objects for whatever you need to use them for. Now, one of Alliance City Living's requirements was being able to use HubSpot to track building records and all of the associated apartments. But not only that, being able to tie apartments back to specific individuals, such as landlords and tenants. Um, so that was one of the, the main use cases there. As well as that, if we if we take a look at the other milestone, which was integration. So Alliance City Living had been using two main systems outside of HubSpot, really. One of them, which is Yorlet, um, a system for property managers. Second one was Alto, uh, which allowed Alliance City Living to just play property listings. We wanted to integrate that with HubSpot. Now, there were a number of different processes we need to, needed to go through for that. One of which is just jumping on discovery calls with Louise and the likes of the team involving relevant stakeholders, really capturing the use cases as a whole, being able to map out that user journey of not only the custom objects, the integrations, so creating integration mapping documents. Um, and effectively, what the main goal was for Alliance City Living is being able to automate a lot of these processes. So with the new let inquiries, Louise, and also the renewals processes, uh, within HubSpot without automation it would effectively fall on its head because there's just too much overhead too much manual work for the team to to use so that was really the the essence of the the use case as a whole for us Alliance City Living. That just to just to interject on that ensuring the customer journey remained our top priority throughout was was kind of the core of all of it we as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, the Manchester property market at the moment is, is really, really crazily busy. Our team couldn't cope with the volume of demands that are coming in, volume of inquiries. So we were looking at ways to ensure that the customers were still getting really fast responses, getting all the information that you could possibly need, but without it having to go to a person um, to actually you know, pick up the phone and do it. So we pre-qualified people through all sorts of different emails and different funnels before it actually came down to the team, which meant that they could spend their time much more efficiently but the customer wasn't sat languishing with no, no contact from us at all for you know days or weeks on end in in this you know bucket that they never heard from us so that was always and remains the big driver for us at the heart of everything we do is coming back to how can we improve the customer experience and customer journey at, at every touch point but i am um, anything we can automate i'm very much there for and there's two key words that to turn this a little bit onto our audience efficiency and experience generally when most companies come and engage with us at boom they talk to us about processes that you have internally which are manual which are laborious let's take time and they've got so many different systems in play that how can they start to either streamline those systems but also create automation that makes processes internally a lot more efficient whilst someone's coming through whether b2b or b2c and they're coming through onto your uh, into your customer journey and they are having the most pleasant experience as possible. Because if they're not having a pleasant experience, they're likely to drop off. Um, great. Um, so Tommy, talk to me next about, okay, so we've been through everything to what the requirements were. How did, how did your team then go and build this? Yeah, I think now would be a good time for me to share my screen, just take you through some of the process documentation. But effectively, if we start with the the custom objects as a whole, so, so firstly, after hearing Louise's requirements and, and the rest of the teams, we decided, right, okay, we need custom objects inside of the portal. It, this is going to improve this immensely moving forward. So effectively, we firstly had to build out what we call an entity relationship diagram. So reviewing the standard entities with HubSpot. So you've got the contacts, deals and companies, how they currently associate with each other. But not only that, how do the apartment records need to relate to the standard entities? 
and then also how do apartments associate to buildings and vice versa so getting this all really mapped out before doing the implementation is key here now alongside that when it comes to the custom object records so in question we've got apartment and building we also needed to consider the relevant properties so what fields sat within the records themselves. So on the apartment, some of the key information that needed to be tracked were a lot of the basic details, such as apartment number, um, addresses, but not only that, what, what could the, park, the apartment offer, such as number of bedrooms, whether it has parking spaces, et cetera. And then on the building level, we looked at the properties to be able to attach specific building managers to the, uh, the records as a whole and also tracking facilities about buildings on the records. Now, once we had mapped out the, the custom object before implementing that inside of HubSpot, we also took a deep look into the user journey. So this is effectively how the deal pipelines were being used inside of HubSpot. Now this has been adapted over time. Uh, so firstly, ACL had a new let inquiry process, which is effectively just a sales pipeline where all of the new inquiries go into um, all the way up until an applicant is complete. But what we wanted to tag onto this portal was actually the ability to track renewals and the relevant stages throughout the renewals process. So starting from when a renewal period for a property comes up, taking that all the way through until the, um, the contract is signed again or if it hits closed loss, then the, the tenancy ends within the renewal. So in order to do that, we needed to sit down and really map this out between each stage of the process, starting to document what the team do in terms of the manual work that is required and how can we take this away, translate that into HubSpot and automate as much as we can. So what we ended up doing is creating workflows for each stage and being able to attach automated emails in those workflows. So as the renewal progresses through the pipeline inside of HubSpot, all of these actions and tasks are being set automatically, um, which really smoothens out the process for the team as they're managing those renewals on a day-to-day. -day. Thanks, Tommy. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one that goes, it's mind blowing, isn't it? How much detail you can go into with things like this. Louise, what impact did this have on your user journey and how your team, when it rolled out Q4, how, what, what impact did it have on your team and how they were working? Well, it's, it's a game changer. So if I kind of take it a little bit of a step back as to why we started this whole thing in the first place, a lot of people hear HubSpot and think marketing system, sending emails, CRM, kind of the end. Whereas I identified at the start and what we were looking for was the full business system. And it, that was the big thing that I had to very much do the sales job to the other departments as such. But this is our central source of the truth for everything. Every interaction a customer has with us goes through here. So we use it from forecasting how many apartments are going to become re-available, who's not renewing, how many available we've got at the moment, what the future pipeline looks like, all of this sort of stuff. So HubSpot, I can't stress how important and central it now is to each of the different companies that, that we run it through. It, it very much isn't just a marketing system. It, you know, it very much is our central control system of all the company processes, all the systems and everything else that we do. So we we very much changed, say so changed a lot of the ways we're working. We just stopped being really manual with everything. Every single one of these steps and touch points that you can see on here, there's lots of other workflows, as Tommy said, that have them broken out into even more detail. So whether it's sending a WhatsApp message, sending a, making a follow-up phone call, sending an email, there was so much manual admin work in that, that as I mentioned before, we just can't resource to deal with from a, a financial viability of the business point, but also it just doesn't make sense. Um, so this has been hugely game changing for us. It's freed up a load of time and all of that sort of stuff. And then as we're back to you know, the customer experience before, but the big thing that we learned is the first time we did this, we as our side didn't go into enough detail as to actually every single step, what you want to happen, who needs to know, who in the team needs to be notified that something's happened. So it, it's the bit that my biggest learning of everything, and obviously we've done multiple other ones of this uh, since with, with BBD Boom is, it's on you as the company 
to really spend that time. And the BBD Boom guys are great because they'll guide it, but you have to spend the time on this piece of homework before you start building anything. We're always really excited to get into the build bit, but this really sitting down with your teams and really interrogating every single thing that you do and why you do it. The stuff that we found that we were doing that we didn't actually need to be doing, we were duplicating tasks in different places. And I think it was a really good leveler actually for the business for us all to sit back down, look at what we're doing, and really streamline our processes rather than just build exactly in HubSpot what we're already doing. You know, Tommy and the guys had some really great suggestions of ways we could speed stuff up, but actually us doing that piece of work to really go, why are we doing that? How can we do that better? All of that stuff. So yeah, this this bit is painful, but it is the most valuable bit of everything else that you do. If you get this bit right, the rest of it's a breeze. The roll out the building, HubSpot is great. I can build a workflow now, my eyes shut largely. But this bit is where, you know, the, the devil's in the detail. It really, really is. And HubSpot's so flexible, you can do so much stuff with it that if you've not done your work at this point, you'll end up off down a, a slight tangent at other points. You're going, oh, I wish I thought about this at the start. So, yeah, that, that's my big thing. Spend the time at the start really nailing these processes and what you want to do and why you want to do it. And out of interest, did you find your team's uptake onto this? Were they Did they embrace it? Were they willing? Were there any parts where they were a little bit hesitant? What was, what was, how did your team react to this? It varied between the companies, actually. Alliance City Living is a younger company, and it didn't really have many formalised processes. So actually, that team really, really got on board and really loved the opportunity. There's a lot of new people had started and everything else to kind of wipe the slate clean, and start again and really actually go, right, we're three years old now. What, what do we wish we knew at the start that we do know now that means we can you know, adjust our processes to be most efficient going forward? The market's changed, the world's different, yada, yada, yada. Alliance Investments, as we mentioned before, they already had Salesforce. Their sales team don't like change in any form. You change one field on Salesforce and everyone has a bit of a, a panic attack and, and it causes all sorts of chaos. So that was a much harder sell for them to understand. So we were using Pardot before with Salesforce. Pardot, from my point of view, is completely hopeless. So it was easy for me to sell all the benefits of what HubSpot brings us from a marketing point versus what Pardot did. Trying to sell them on changing processes was a much, much harder, harder task. And we've had less success in some ways, but there hasn't been as much of a need for a change for their actual Salesforce side because... We've been able to do all of my stuff um, in HubSpot without it really impacting them. So, yeah, mixed and very much different personalities will react and do react better to change than others. Alliance City Living, fantastic, though. They, and that is, that again, that is the key. It's that willingness from the team for them to all understand how it makes their life easier. Um, and once they really understood what HubSpot can do, like, oh, it can just do that reminder. Oh, it can just tell me I need to do something. Oh, it can it can just send that WhatsApp message. They really got it. And then we've actually gone to the, let's automate as much stuff as we possibly can, which is great because they're very much on my bandwagon. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. um, you mentioned Salesforce, just to quickly touch on Salesforce. It's common in most companies that there is a system advocate for many systems. It's like you had Sarah, didn't you, that's your Salesforce manager, does everything in Salesforce. What it's really key or what it's really worth reassuring is, we're not trying to replace Salesforce. In some cases, we would like to, but we're not trying to replace Salesforce in every case. So it's just reassuring them that actually what we're trying to do here is to streamline the two systems so that they work together so that then Sarah in your company, she feels and understands the role that HubSpot plays, the role of what Salesforce plays, how the two systems work together, but then also where Tommy's doing things in HubSpot, where she then needs to be aware of what's going on within Salesforce and vice versa. And she's very much, you know, so Sarah is our Salesforce admin. She's very much actually got on board with HubSpot. She's loved learning a new system. And I think because we had Pardot plugged into Salesforce, obviously part of the same platform, and we've replaced Pardot with HubSpot, and HubSpot is so much better, that's actually eased a lot of the, you know, the reticence at the start. And I think the fact that, again, it's easy to change stuff, it's easy to see. But the fact that it basically... I'm saying basically out of the box has an integration Salesforce. Having Sarah at my side and, you know, Tommy at BBD Boom's side to actually really talk that techie and make sure it all magically synced across. I could figure it out if I really needed to, but um, it was such a seamless process. It was fantastic. The fact that 
you know, you don't actually going to have to build a full API connection and some complex code and whatever else. If you've already got Salesforce, you can just plug HubSpot in and it's great. It works so, so well, uh, the two systems together. Whenever I say it, we've got Salesforce on HubSpot, you, you get a lot of people that look at you and go, huh? Salesforce is really great for a load of stuff and the processes that we have built over quite a few years, but it was never going to do, whether it's, um, I looked at Marketing Cloud, I said we'd have Pardot, went through a lot, a lot of demos and HubSpot is still the best from an email, the, the ads integration and all of that sort of stuff. So um, the next concern then was going, oh, we can't have two separate CRM systems or talk to each other, but it, it is so easy. And that is back to that customizability of HubSpot thing, either the out of the box integrations, whether it's with WhatsApp, um, you know, Salesforce, MailChimp, there's all sorts of different ones and it's so easy to do. But then for people like me who give me an inch and I'll take a mile of, I want to fully customize the whole thing. It also lets you do that. So as far as you want to push it, you can do, especially if you've got, I said, someone like Tommy, poor Tommy is uh, also had about three years of me going, can I just, what about, but he always makes it happen. I think because there's always a willingness from Tommy and his team to really get on board and understand how we work as a business. Obviously we're working together quite a while now, but the fact that the system can do so much stuff and they're always changing, they're always developing the, the forums actually listen, you get responses, you know, if you suggest ideas or things that aren't quite working, you can actually still speak to a real person. Whereas the number of hoops I have to jump through at Salesforce to talk to someone that's not a robot is frustrating. So yeah, from a user journey point, so as me as a user experience point using the system, it's fantastic. Yeah. I can see you're chomping at the bit to talk about process. Everyone's, everyone's favorite subject, so go for it. It's definitely my favorite subject. <laughs> when it comes down to the, the Alliance Investments onboarding to HubSpot. So as Louise mentioned, replacing Pardot with HubSpot, we had to go through a number of steps just to get all of this mapped out from the start. So when it came to integrating Salesforce, there were a few milestones that we needed to hit beforehand. And firstly, as you can see on this diagram now, Alliance Investments had a number of different channels for which leads can effectively enter the HubSpot system via form fill. Now, one of those sources was a, a number of micro sites that were actually hosted outside of HubSpot on various CMS platforms such as Craft, CMS, Squarespace. We needed to make sure all of those forms were connected to HubSpot and feeding into the Alliance Investments instance. Now, secondly, we also had to consider lead assignment. So whenever new inquiries came into HubSpot before they integrated into Salesforce and created as a lead, that lead assignment needed to happen inside of HubSpot first. So we went through a process of mapping out lead assignment workflows to assign new, new inquiries by sales region. So depending on the country they filled in on the form, routing it to the relevant person as a contact owner before syncing them across to Salesforce. Now, what this really means is from a Salesforce perspective, that enables the team to get the leads that they need to be assigned to um, and really removing a lot of that noise in, instead of just sending across a bulk load of unassigned leads. All of that work takes place in HubSpot beforehand. Another interesting part of this uh, implementation was the fact that we had the Alliance Investment CRM. That CRM also needed to sync with the ACL HubSpot instance. So we're talking about two separate instances here. So if rental leads came in via Alliance Investments, we needed to be able to sync those to the ACL HubSpot instance and notify the relevant person to take that query on, inquiry on board. For this, we decided to use um, an out-of-the-box solution, Zapier, which we can get into in a bit more detail when we talk about learnings as well. Um, but effectively, if, if we just finish off the process now, when it comes down to the lead assignment after that takes place, the contacts would hit an inclusion list. And this is the, the sync criteria, which allows new leads to be created in Salesforce. So once a contact hits that list, they're created in Salesforce, assigned to the relevant sales rep. And then from that point onwards, they're converted into a person account opportunities created that worked through the sales process in Salesforce. All of that data needed to sync back to HubSpot for reporting and automation purposes. So you can, the team could start to attribute revenue to relevant marketing sources, which is where that Salesforce integration came in quite seamlessly and um, was really, really beneficial to the process. 
So this is where it gets dangerous because I'm very nervous about doing lessons learned with the customer, but you both touched on the subjects of lessons learned. So I'm going to play it safe. And let's go boom side first. Tommy, tell us about some lessons which you learned through this process, including third party plugins, not to put you on the spot. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, Andy, there's, there's quite a lot to learn um, as we went through the process. But one of the first ones was definitely Zapier. So as I mentioned before, we use Zapier for a lot of the, the trigger points and integrations within the Alliance Investments onboarding. Now, the first use case was being able to connect third party forms into HubSpot. And the second one was being able to sync data between two HubSpot instances. Now, in, in hindsight, what we have learned about Zapier is it's, it's a really great tool to just get integrations up and running. But what they do require is a lot of manual overhead. So where we're talking about potentially having eight different microsites feeding in all of the forms into one HubSpot, um, in hindsight, we probably should have just embedded HubSpot forms onto those websites. Although that would have taken longer, it would have you know, removed a lot of that friction with the overhead of having to report on Zapier error issues, jump in and fix them. And also it removes that ongoing licensing fee that you you get when you're using these third party systems. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Tommy. Um, Louise? That, I mean, that is the biggest one that, and I've already mentioned the the planning. That's, I think we, we are twofold. We were quite keen to just jump in and get, get started ourselves and whatever else. For me, I really now can't stress enough the importance or the value in having a partner. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of BBD Boom. I'm, uh, I've, had a, I've had a great experience, which is why I keep coming back. And I like working with one company who know our companies inside and out because I don't have to re-explain myself and go through that learning journey each time. But that knowledge and experience and advice, you know, Tommy, you mean you, Andy, as well, you're always there when I need to pick up the phone. I think Adam's lurking on this call somewhere. Poor Adam's had calls from me at different places. How do I do this? What about this? And whatever else. So, you know, working with a partner and doing that planning and that process mapping and spending that time internally before we speak to BBD Boom almost, really working through ourselves what we want BBD Boom to deliver. The guys are amazing. They're all fantastic, but they're not mind readers and they're not sat in your business. And they will always ask me the awkward questions that I also tend to be asked to go, but what happens then? Or, but what about that? But if you haven't done that work yourself, they're only going to be able to build something that's as good as the information that you gave in the first place. And one of the first iterations of Alliance City Living that we built wasn't fit for purpose, but that was largely our fault because our brief and our planning on our side, and particularly with Staff Changer, hadn't been clear enough as to really what we needed it to deliver and how we needed it to deliver it. So yeah, Zapier, the least third party integrations, the better. So we should have spent that time at the start integrating the, the HubSpot forms, you know, great. That that's that for me is a, a minor one, but it was a pain in the backside at various points because it kept chipping us up a little, you know, until recently when we just got rid of, you know, bit the bulletin, got rid of everything. But yeah, my two big ones would be working with a partner and really planning and really knowing your business and everything you want it to do from the start. That time is so well, yeah, spending that time at the start really pays you back later. I yeah. would I would probably add on trust and relationship to those two as well, because I think <clears throat> Relationship is key here. And I think what you both talk about is essentially building the foundation of a good relationship between partner and customer, because you want to be able to be, you want to be able to have a strong enough relationship so that you can pick up the phone and say to the customer, and I think this is a good thing to do. Um, you're pushing your luck. Again, it takes a good, strong relationship for the customer success manager to pick up the phone to their customer and say, look, I've just had a chat with Tommy. Tommy thinks you're pushing your luck. So we've got to um, find a different way of doing this. Um, and that's, that is one of the things, when you said the word then, for me, it isn't a client relationship as such. I very much, it's almost like we work, well, we work with each other, for each other, however you choose. It very much is a partnership. You know, you guys could pretty much come in and, and do half of our job because you know the way that we work so well. And, and that is really, really valuable for us because... I know that Tommy just gets because he's been working with me for so long. So I can ring him up and have a conversation about something I'm either thinking of doing or something that's not working. And because he understands all of those intricacies 
and has built it in the first place as to why we've gone through and why we've made the decisions that we've made it's just he just gets it and you know and i i'm a very blunt person i very much value um personal relationships where you can just have a really frank conversation bbd boom are amazing but not always perfect nobody is i am as a client far from perfect on many occasions i'll take two weeks to come back and then send all my feedback in one go so you know it is having that relationship where andy tommy you both pick up the phone and go oi lou Either you need to respond on this or you're pushing to look like you just said, but in the same way that we can go, guys, I need that a bit faster or I need this or that wasn't quite the way we briefed it. Can we just, and I think we very much got that, um, but it is very, very valuable. If you've got someone, we all spend too much time talking to each other. If we can't work with each other and engage and get on on that personal work level, then for me, it isn't going to work. We spend too much time in process maps to uh, to not get on and not have the odd blunt, uh, blunt conversation. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I'm open enough to say, I'd say in the property sector, in the property world, you guys are, with, from a software perspective, are potentially leading the way with how you can use so software like HubSpot and make it work for your business. Um, can you give us any snippets of what 2023 looks like for Property Alliance Group? More and more integration is probably the, uh, the, the big thing. So we, across all of our different companies are continuing to grow it's a it's a surprisingly possibly for some people it's a great time in the property sector you know we're, we're fully let in various places we've got more and more buildings so from a tech side it's continuing to integrate all of our different systems into one place so we're obviously moving into uh, our landlord journey and bringing the whole landlord journey into acl um hubspot that's our first um first q1 project we're going live with whatsapp at the moment so again really finalizing that over the start of q1 fixed flow integration we're obviously working on a fixed flow integration as well um our app is with spike so we're considering you know different ways to integrate that so i need to get to the point where um, i will get to the point where hubspot is our single source of the truth so any interaction any conversation that's been had with any of our customers whether it's tenants landlords developers whoever it may be is on that record so if they've submitted a maintenance form through fixed flow that again is on that customer record so that is where i will get to by end of q1 end of q2 next year um so yeah lot, lots more integration lots more automation but getting to that central source of the truth i know it's a bit of an overused marketing phrase but really really valuable for us so it's a, whether it's a building manager or a letting person they can see all the problems or all the great experiences that someone's had with us so before we come to speak about contract renewal you can see all the tickets they've raised, if they've had any issues, any complaints, what's been dealt with, have they paid their rent on time, are they a good tenant, do we want to keep them, do we want to ease them out, all of that sort of stuff, the, the value of the information all being in one place for us is unrivaled, particularly as we enter into what I'm sure is going to be an interesting few years in, uh, you know, in the property market. Definitely. I generally do find it quite surprising that not much of the property market is utilising HubSpot as a software yeah, uh, or understanding how they can use something like HubSpot to really play a central role in all of their communication. But also from what we've dis discussed a lot today, like first touch all the way through to building management. So, you know, more and more people, if they watch this, they might find that's the route to go down. Um, Tommy, I want to flip it a little bit now, just for five minutes. I'm conscious we've got um, six minutes left. So for two minutes, I want to flip it. Whilst I flip it to talk about how this could be custom, how HubSpot can be utilised for other B2B companies, please do feel free to post any questions that you might have in. We've got approximately six minutes. So whilst Tommy's talking, please post your questions in. We can have the last couple, couple of minutes just to do any Q&A. If you want to ask Louise questions, go for it. Likewise, if you want to ask Tommy, Tommy questions about HubSpot, if you want to ask me a question about how I keep my beard lovely and shiny, please go for it. <laughs> talk to us about some other companies that Boom works with. Um, about how we have also um, customised the portal to work for them. Yeah, definitely, Andy. So we've talked a lot about the property industry, but we also work with a number of other B2B companies. So one of the first use cases is actually the, um, the utilities industry. So people operating, installing fiber optic networks. So for one of our customers, we used custom objects to, to customise HubSpot uh, in order for them to be able to track internet service providers as records so the likes of virgin media bt and also being able to associate those isps with their schemes so they they would have scheme records inside of hubspot uh, which effectively tracks all of the building information and which internet service provider 
operates in that relevant scheme. We also did an integration with HubSpot and those custom objects to feed data from a, a broadband speed checking system on a regular cadence for every scheme record. So they could return the relevant download and upload speeds uh, for their records to share them with their relevant providers as well. Uh, so that's a, that's a really good use case. Another industry we've worked with is, and it's a big one, it's the software industry. So for one of our customers, we've done a big system architecture piece. So actually just looking at the way they're using HubSpot all the way from their website, how they're getting leads in, into the system, how sales are creating records into the system and starting to map out all of their tech stack and how that feeds into HubSpot. So that really relates to what Louise was saying. HubSpot are doing a lot of work and have done over the last couple of years to improve the native integrations in the app marketplace, but also the abilities to integrate custom apps. So in this use case, looking at the sales process, we can see within HubSpot, they're also plugging in LinkedIn Sales Navigator um, as a native integration, also using a system called Sales Loft. In the future, that would be replaced by the HubSpot Sales Hub, but at this current point in time, they weren't necessarily ready for that. And uh, when it comes on to the account management process, also looking at systems such as Chan Zero and, and Intercom for the way they're currently managing and communicating to their current customers and just seeing how the, all of that can feed into HubSpot. And you'll also see down the bottom here where it says no integration to HubSpot. So systems like Xero for financial uh, management, they can be integrated into HubSpot. But, but in this use case, this was looked at as more of a phase two. Um, and also for any customers, especially in the software industry that have custom platforms, we, we also do custom integrations into HubSpot uh, with systems like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be native. Thanks, Tommy. And a really, really good question that's come in whilst we're talking about integrations. Um, a question's come for Louise to say, uh, interested to know why you kept Salesforce on the operational side and not moved everything onto HubSpot? Because everyone freak out far too much, basically. So, that, that's my very blunt vision. So essentially a lot of money, a lot, underlined bold capitals of money has been spent prior to me joining the company on Salesforce. We have a full-time member of staff who's a Salesforce admin. Um, so there's there's a lot of investment that's gone in there. For me, there's nothing that we're doing in Salesforce at the moment that couldn't be done in HubSpot. So I ha still have on my slightly longer term plan to get rid of it completely. Same with your lack from an ACL point, being blunt, there's a lot about that that I think particularly as HubSpot continues to develop that we can actually just replicate in HubSpot and therefore save us ourselves a whole load of money still from you know not having to have to pay for Salesforce or, or pay for your let. But yeah, that was that was a step too far. Ripping out part up, which wasn't effective and whatever else, was enough of a enough of a challenge for them at the time. Um changing a lot of the systems that they've spent a lot of time and money on was a bit too much for them. But that is 100 percent my my end goal. Great. Thanks, Louise. Tommy, question for you. So I'd like to tell us a little bit about um, the process that Boone went through to help the Alliance City Living team uptake on using HubSpot. So what did we do to support Louise and her team? Things like training, user sessions, on-site visits. Talk, give us a quick 30 seconds on what we did. Yeah, definitely. So, so at the end of the, the onboarding and implementation, we scheduled in relevant training sessions for everyone on the Alliance investment side that needed to use HubSpot. Now, we, we typically break that down by what the topic was. So having a session for basic users who just want to use HubSpot to edit records or create records in the system and take them through the sales process. Um, the second one would obviously be more in-depth training sessions, such as in-depth reporting and actually getting into how to build custom reports to really enable the team to not only be able to build reports themselves, but not have to rely on us to build those dashboards for them and um aside from those virtual sessions we, we've also had day sessions up in manchester with louise and the rest of the team which have been really beneficial for brainstorming um and just learning on the spot as well 
Yeah, just just to second that, those particularly the in-person sessions are really, really super valuable. I mean, all of the training sessions have been great. And I think breaking them down into rather than it being like one whole day of training, which everyone, the brains turn off, that that way of breaking it down into smaller relevant sessions based on different bits, different people are interested in really, really worked for us. Um, and then topped up with the with the in-person stuff's great. Really good. Thanks, Mike. One final question, Tommy. Probably one for you. What is the most difficult individual challenge you have had to overcome using HubSpot? Dealing with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It has to be software. It can't be person related. Okay. Um, that, that's a really hard question, actually, just to pin down one answer. But I would say one of the the biggest challenges probably at this moment with HubSpot is from the the integrations perspective and custom objects so if we fast forward to this time last year HubSpot rolled out custom objects um, it wasn't actually part of the front end UI at that stage but fast forward to today they're slowly upgrading the features and what they have released now is a, a front end UI for building custom objects so you don't even need a developer um, to go in and build that custom object with the code you can do it on the front end and um, what you can also see with HubSpot, if I just quickly share my screen in a demo environment, they've also added custom objects to the front end interface so you can see them alongside other entities. Now, previously with HubSpot, it was a big challenge because the custom objects were hidden in the system. Um, and, and the same can be said for integrations. So some of the native integrations with HubSpot, depending on the use case, they are quite basic. So one of those challenges is actually learning about a customer's use case and seeing if a native option is relevant, but if not, going down the custom route. But I know, um, especially going to the next few years, HubSpot are doing an incredible amount of work on the operations hub and the data sync apps to really pad those out and add more features to them. So I hope that answers the question. Thanks, Tommy. And we've got one final question that I'm going to throw over to Louise. I think this is a perfect question for Louise to answer. We have had a question come in um, from someone that works in real estate. They're a real estate developer. And their question is, I'm finding it very difficult to make HubSpot standard features fit to our business requirements. What would be the best process that you'd go through, Louise, in trying to understand what to do at this stage? It's that's a difficult one to answer without understanding what isn't, you know, what isn't fitting. Um, the the big thing, it kind of goes back to some of my answer before of that, really sitting down, planning every single step of what you want to happen at every single bit. It might be that you need some custom objects, you know, and that's where working with someone like like you guys is for me, it was the only way, you know, the only way forward. Where we've got to with with our systems is and it's it's been a lot of work from uh, particularly Tommy's Tommy's my, my HubSpot Oracle. Um, we've got to the point, and it is perseverance and and patience and and planning. Um, but we've got to the point where I can see every single apartment that we have, who lives in it, who owns it, what facilities it's got, whatever else. So it it can be done. It will be done. Um, it's just it's just time. Um, most of the core features in terms of dealing with leads, processing leads, selling a property, all of that for us fitted perfectly with the standard functionality. And linking that back, what how many viewings have been done on apartment 10 in Access, for example, that's the bit that we couldn't do without the custom object. So um, I'd probably suggest speak to BBD Boom, have some uh, have some faith and, and do a lot of planning, but there is always, always a way forward and always a solution for it. And we haven't paid Louise to say that, by the way. No, um, no. Um, also, thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Um, I'm going to say thank you very much to both Tommy and Louise for joining us today. Really, really informative session. If you enjoyed today's session, please feel free to go on to LinkedIn, uh, add any comments. If you'd like any further topics for us to discuss on these type of formats, please also go in and add your um, your um, thoughts on that. I'm also just going to promote that we have two more events coming up from at BBD Boom. We have the Connected Customer, which is our live event on Thursday, which again, lucky for us, Louise has attended live in person. We've also been joined by Rory McLeod, Senior Growth Specialist from HubSpot. 
and also the one and only Adam Lewis from DVD Boom. That is Thursday in Southampton. It's Thursday evening. So if you are local to Bournemouth, Southampton, and you want to come along to the event, it is an in-person drop-in. There'll be food, entertainment. Please come onto the DVD Boom website, find the event, go and register yourself, and then pop along and see us on Thursday. Also, we are very privileged to be joined by Carl Gibson on the 8th of December for our very hub spotty Christmas session, which the BBD Boom team and Carl Jepson are going to be reviewing the top features which have been launched by HubSpot this year, put them into context of what they mean from a HubSpot perspective, what they mean from a Boom client perspective, and how it has helped us roll out these updates, engage with our customers. So really, really good session. If you know Carl Jepson from the HubSpot world, you'll know the amount of energy that he brings to his webinars. So it's surely one not to miss. Um, and a final one just to say, if you would like to get in touch with the, the, the growth team at BBD Boom, please go onto our website. You'll see that there's a live chat on the website. We can go through and speak to any of our growth team. Please go and communicate with them. Um, we would love to be talking to you about anything that we've discussed today. And yeah, look forward to, to, to hearing from you guys. Um, very thank you to Tommy Price. Yeah, thanks everyone for listening today. Big thank you to Louise Mason. Thank you very much. It's been good to chat. Um, and thank you very much, everyone, for attending.